1955 in Mississippi, a black 14-year-old boy by the name of Emmett Till was kidnapped, tortured, and killed because allegedly he had offended a white woman in her family's grocery store. The people who tortured and murdered him, well, they were acquitted and he was left dead. His family heartbroken. The powers that be and folks who were in charge wanted people to just forget about this and move on. But Emmett Till's mom, well, she had different plans. She wanted the whole world to see what had happened to her boy. So she insisted on an open casket funeral for her son. Photos of Emmett Till's mutilated body made newspapers around the world. And people were forced to face the ugly reality of what was happening in society. Now, a group of activists here in Alberta and right across Canada, the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform, is taking a page out of Emmett Till's book to address a different issue, abortion. Adam Sos here for Rebel News. You've no doubt heard the fact that Roe v. Wade was overturned in the United States. People are protesting that decision. Even here in Canada, very often those folks are uninformed. They really don't know what that decision makes. People across Canada are also uninformed about the abortion status in this country. They're unfamiliar with the fact that there are no legal restrictions on abortion whatsoever in Canada. In fact, all abortions, for whatever reason, are funded by the government, even up to and including full-term partial birth abortions. That puts Canada in the same company as China and North Korea, and no modern democracy in the entire world has zero restrictions on the books, except for Canada. Well, one group, the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform, is trying to take action to change that. And as we mentioned, their approach can be a little bit controversial. So I guess first off, you're the guy who drives the truck around, presumably. Uh, if you could introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your organization. Yeah, so name's Cameron Cote. I'm the Western Outreach Director for the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform. We're a national educational pro-life organization that proactively engages Canadians in thought-provoking encounters about abortion. We show the reality of what abortion does to the weakest, most vulnerable members of the human family, and we engage them in compassionate and compelling conversations about why abortion is never an appropriate solution for even the most challenging of hard circumstances circumstances. So I, I, before we get into some of the methodologies, which are somewhat controversial, um, I wanted to sort of set the stage uh, as far as the realities of abortion in Canada. But before that, just maybe a reaction to Roe v. Wade being uh, overturned and if there's any implications indeed for that in Canada. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's an incredible day for the global pro-life movement, particularly the American pro-life movement. I think there's going to be a ton of aftermath in Canada. I think that for a lot of people in Canada, it's the first time they're really thinking about abortion as something that is up for debate. It's up for public engagement. And so we're going to have a huge amount of opportunities to engage on this issue. But we're also going to have a ton of people come to Canada as an abortion kind of sanctuary. Americans coming up here. I'm sure the Liberal government and countless others are going to try to find every way possible to have people having abortions in Canada. And so it gives the educational arm of Canada's pro-life movement an even greater opportunity and obligation to engage people in meaningful interactions about abortion so that people don't want abortions, regardless of whether they're accessible in Canada or not. So then I, I just have to ask, and we kind of touched on it, but uh, abortion is obviously legal for all nine months, publicly funded. We even see partial birth abortions, all of that. Uh, and, and kind of what we've heard and we've stated as well is it's basically Canada, China, North Korea, no modern democracy. How did it get to the point where it's just a, a carte blanche on abortions with no restrictions? Yeah, so I mean, ever since the Liberal government way back in 1969 with Pierre Elliott Trudeau's government bringing abortion from being fully illegal to open to therapeutic therapeutic abortion committees, and then in 1988, that being overturned with um, the Morgan Teller decision, we've had a complete legal void. So we don't have a charter right, we don't have a constitutional right to abortion. We have a legal void in that the previous abortion legislation was struck down and the courts kind of encouraged, invited, challenged Parliament to put something forward and they haven't done that. And not only have they not done that in any kind of meaningful way, but even when we see Kathy Wagenthal's bill trying to prevent sex selective abortions, we can't even get a majority of parliamentarians to vote in favor of that in spite of the fact that an overwhelming majority of Canadians reject sex selective abortions, late term abortions, all these things that are still happening, maybe not in high volumes, but they're still happening. And that's why the educational arm needs to really pick up our socks and start doing more 
engaging our friends, engaging our family members, our neighbors on this important issue because legal change is downstream of cultural change. We need to change public opinion as we try to change public policy because if people don't want that change public policy, it's probably not gonna come about. So now you, you talked about some of the sort of extreme examples, sex selective abortion, late term abortion, even partial uh, birth abortions, those types of things. Now those are sort of the, the small percentiles people discuss, but are those things really happening in Canada? Oh, they're absolutely happening in Canada. This is documented by um, Canadian Institute for Health Information showing that late-term abortions, abortions after 24 weeks are happening. We've seen headlines in the news, not only partial birth abortions and late-term abortions, but we're seeing babies that are left born alive and left to die in hospital rooms and clinics and all sorts of different places. It's not happening super frequently, but that shouldn't give us any kind of warm, fuzzy feelings that, oh, there's only a couple babies a year that are getting left to die after they've been born alive. It shouldn't give us any kind of comforting feelings that, oh, a small minority of babies are being ripped apart after they're 24 weeks old. Abortion is a human rights violation from the moment of fertilization until they're born, regardless of the, the fact that a, a 24 week old um, human fetus can survive outside of the womb. The, the fact that there are abortions performed on children that can survive outside of the womb doesn't change the fact that a 12-week abortion, a week abortion, the morning after pill, things that are killing human beings who deserve human rights are happening day after day after day here in Canada. Now, on the day after day, what, what, like what percentage of pregnancies end in, in abortion? Uh, how prevalent is abortion? And what are the reasons? Is it normally medical? Or what, what's the sort of grounds for your, your run-of-the-mill, as you say, uh, abortion? Yeah, so unfortunately in Canada, it's incredibly difficult to get any kind of concrete information because obviously the abortion industry, the abortion providers are reluctant to release any kind of information about that. And so the most relevant statistics we have from like 2018, 2019 show there's probably around 100,000 abortions performed every year. So around 300 per day in Canada. The majority of those are happening before 18 weeks. Many abortion facilities will only perform them up to 18 weeks. But again, that shouldn't give us any kind of consolation. Um, and, and they're happening for a wide variety of reasons. Presumably, I've spoken to literally thousands of moms who have chosen abortion for a variety of reasons. Financial uncertainty, pressure from their boyfriend, coercion, um, compulsion from parents. Lots of different things are pushing people towards seeking out abortion. But one thing is common amongst all of the mothers that I talk to. For all of them, abortion was seen as their only option or a last resort. And I think the message that we want to give to people day after day is, can we solve the very real problems that parents are faced with by intentionally killing an innocent human? These problems de demand solutions, but can you solve a problem by killing an innocent human? Obviously not. So there is obviously, I think most people would agree, whether you're, whether you're pro-abortion or anti-abortion, whatever you may call it, that there's a legal void that needs to be filled. Um, but I want to get into some of these graphic abortion image. Uh, you, you have them on the truck, you have them as, on signs. We're going to be talking uh, to some of the people who are involved in that sort of activism. But I know even pro-life people who are like, why are you doing this? This doesn't represent us. It's extreme. It paints the entire pro-life community in a bad. How do you respond to sort of those criticisms? I mean, the first thing is that this is the evidence, right? That, that at the end of the day, abortion is wrong because it directly and intentionally kills an innocent human. And it's alarming how many Canadians don't realize that. We hear statements along the lines of it's just a clump of cells or it, it's just a fetus, it's just an embryo, as though that's not a human being. Yeah. And so we need to put the evidence on display to demonstrate the fact that this is a human being. That if we're trying to solve a math problem and we get different answers, we're not just going to shout our conclusions back and forth. We're going to provide the evidence to conclude how we got to that conclusion, mm -hmm. an image of what abortion does to a preborn child, literally a, a human being who's been ripped apart in the womb, that is the evidence that abortion kills children and that this is not an appropriate solution to whatever moms and dads are going through. And so on a very practical kind of principle level, this is important because people need to know what is happening. This has happened throughout history that victim imagery, whether um, in the abolition of the slave trade, whether in um, the, the fight for civil rights, whether for gender equality, lots of different things have demonstrated the victims of injustice, particularly when people don't think about them very often. It's really easy to leave victims of abortion behind closed doors, behind the curtain, so that we don't think about them very often. We have to put this out on display because injustice that is invisible inevitably remains tolerable. Now, what, on the front of protecting children, yep. one of the criticisms that I'll often see is you're exposing children to images that are not appropriate for children. How do you respond to those criticisms? I mean, the first one is just a practical source that, that we don't go to elementary schools, we don't go to daycares, we don't go to places like that 
to try to engage young students. We're here to engage the, the moms and dads who are con considering abortion. We're um, engaging people who are old enough to have these. And that's how we pick our routes, our, our locations, so that we identify those groups of people. We're at college campuses where obviously the majority of people are in that demographic. And yet at the end of the day, if I have to evaluate my strategy based on the feelings and emotions of a born child or the very life of a pre-born child, knowing that these images save lives, unfortunately, we have to do everything that we can to avoid encountering those children while still knowing that there are lives that hang in the balance. And I have an urgency to engage as many Canadians as humanly possible. Now, is this effective? Is there any sort of evidence to suggest people see this and they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be performing mass abortions up to nine months. Absolutely. So not only do we have the anecdotal evidence that day after day, week after week, we're talking to people about abortion and a huge catalyst in them changing their minds. And we see around 30% of people that we talk to, even for a short period of time, completely change their mind on abortion in the span of a conversation. And so many of them cite the images as what it was that was a catalyst of I'd never thought about abortion in that way before, seeing the real victim. But not only the anecdotal evidence, we have the statistical evidence that through polling that we've we commissioned a, a third party polling group that does polling for the government to gauge the impact of these images. What it found was that over two thirds of people polled were willing to admit that they felt more negatively about abortion after seeing the victims of abortion than they had before. Willing to admit that and that only 8% of people claimed that it emboldened their stance on abortion. And so we get that there are people who view abortion victim photography and it changes the way they think about abortion. When they change the way they think about abortion, they're going to change the way they act about abortion. So I guess first off, have you always be, been pro-life or is this sort of something you kind of stumbled upon later? Um, I personally have always been pro-life, raised in a pro-life family, but um, it really actually in my grade 12 year in my bio class, that's when the passion really like hit me because I realized like the humanity of like what I really believed and it kind of like struck me more than so I'd say I was always pro-life but not always so convicted about it. So I've done pro-life activism in the past in terms of praying outside the abortion clinic trying to be there to help people in that 11th hour when they really don't find they can find they don't necessarily know the other sources that they can go to for support in our society. Part of the reason why I've gravitated towards actually helping with something that is as graphic as abortion victim photography is because of, like someone explained to me, if there's a fire going on, the best weapon or the best tool that we have to put out the fire is the fire hose, right? There's always a risk. So if someone walks in front of a fire hose, it's not gonna end well. It's kind of like when we're using abortion victim photography to make sure that this doesn't actually happen in practice. So if we can actually show people what the reality of what abortion looks like and show them that it's not just all about messaging, that there is actually a human being that's being terminated in this process, however graphic it is, I think that's a really important message to send and I'm happy that there's an opportunity to, to team up with people to get this message out. I would say as long as I'm alive, uh, I'm gonna be pro-life because I want uh, the pre-born to have that same chance, you know? And why did you decide to become involved in this sort of activism? There's a lot of opportunities out there, uh, this very sort of in your face on the streets. Why did you choose this activism? Um, like at first I tried to start my own group and I looked around in the city of Calgary and couldn't find one. And originally I was uncertain about this approach, but I think it, it wakes people up from what they're doing in everyday life. Mm -hmm. And whether the reaction is good and bad, it creates, um, a time and a place for a critical conversation that could steer the rest of their life. And if it comes off a little offensive, uh, you know, that's not always our intention. Our intention is to, to educate and grip people to the horrors that abortion is, right? And so this is obviously sort of a uh, somewhat controversial form of pro-life activism. Why have you decided to become involved with the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform and sort of the graphic end of abortion or anti-abortion advocacy? Well, I think it's really important just like the educational piece, the fact that this happens so much and that um, society has accepted it so much and the fact that they don't realize the reality of abortion and that this is in fact a living human being and the fact that they can just deny the humanity, but when in fact, like you can't deny it when you see this even at eight weeks. Yeah, I get lots of different reactions, obviously. Uh, just yesterday, I had a man pass by say, thank you so much for what you're doing. And he had barely finished and another guy walked by and said, you, this is disgusting, like totally different reactions. 
Um, I've had some really interesting conversations with all kinds of people. You know, they, they're so open to sharing their story a lot of times, even, even as we are open and, um, yeah, some really great experiences for sure. Well, regardless of your position on abortion and regardless of what you think of the strategies employed by the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform, they are certainly generating conversation and bringing these stories to the forefront. I want to get your opinion, though, so please comment and let us know what you think about the use of these images in abortion and anti-abortion activism. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. Rebel News is often the only ones out here telling these types of stories. Sometimes they're difficult stories, sometimes they're difficult topics, but it's important that we can bring you the other side of the story on these matters. If you want to support our independent journalism, as you know, we don't get handouts from the government. That's why we can tell some of these stories. You can support us by becoming a Rebel News Plus member for only $8 a month. You get access to all of our exclusive members only show, no ads on the website, and plus you're keeping us hard at work telling the other side of the story. Again, go to rebelnews.com and sign up for Rebel News Plus.